Hi there, I'm Paul Toll and I lead the security pillar within EMEA's OCI Center of Excellence within Oracle. Today's topic is one that I get asked questions about all the time, and it's to do with Oracle eBusiness Suite and single sign-on and user management within eBusiness Suite. Specifically, when you're looking to implement single sign-on using Identity Cloud Service or OCI's Identity and Access Management. So what I thought I'd do is pop the common questions that I get asked um, into this video and we'll go through the answers and I'll explain um, how we achieve um, and how we cover some of these common topics. So as usual, the safe harbor statement, I don't plan on talking about futures. Um, when I'm talking about single sign-on and provisioning and user management, all of these are generally available features. Now, if you've read any of my previous um, articles or seen any of my pre previous videos, you might have um, be familiar with Identity Cloud Service from Oracle, uh, whereas here we're going to be talking about OCI Identity and Access Management. So I just wanted to clear it up and explain why we're talking about OCI's Identity and Access Management and not Identity Cloud Service. But we've recently, recently been through um, a change within OCI where we took the capability of Identity Cloud Service and merged it into OCI IAM. And we did that by creating what we call identity domains. So now we have all the rich capability that Identity Cloud Service delivered within the OCI Identity and Access Management Service. So when you're looking to do single sign-on or you're looking to do provisioning or user synchronization with eBusiness Suite, whether you're using Identity Cloud Service today or whether you're looking to implement it from now on using Identity and Access Management from OCI, the capability is exactly the same. The way you approach it is the same. The asserter is the same. The MFA capabilities you have available to you are the same. So you get this now natively within OCI's Identity and Access Management. So hopefully that clears that up. So let's dive straight into the questions. Question number one, if I'm using OCI's IAM, do I still need to deploy IAM Suite for eBusiness Suite? So if you've been using eBusiness Suite for quite some time, you may be familiar with the standard reference architecture around implementing single sign-on for eBusiness Suite. And it looks like this. So the traditional approach for doing single sign-on is to utilize Oracle Access Manager underpinned by a directory, which is either Oracle Internet Directory or Oracle Unified Directory. And this is the standard documented integration um, approach. Now, part of the challenge with this approach is it requires quite a bit of deployment. If you look at the reference architecture on the right hand side, it shows you the components you would need to deploy from an access manager and directory services point of view in order to achieve that single sign-on capability. As you can see, there's a, a resilient web logic cluster in the middle with multiple components. There's a database underpinning it. There's load balancers and web servers at the front end. So it takes some deployment. It takes some ongoing management and operational maintenance to, to look after that environment. So some customers may already have that deployed. Some might not have that deployed and they're looking to implement single sign-on and they want to understand the approach that we're talking about now using OCI's IAM, do they still need to deploy Oracle Access Manager and Oracle Directory services? And the answer is no, you don't. In fact, if you already have um, Identity Access Management Suite deployed, then you must unpick and un deconfigure that integration in order to use the OCI IAM approach using the Assert and the Provisioning Bridge. Now, the difference between the approach for single sign-on when we're using OCI is that the majority of that infrastructure that you would have deployed with Access Manager and Directory Services is taken care of within OCI IAM as a cloud service. So it means you don't have to take care of it. There's no deploying the Access Management Service. There's no deploying the Directory Service. There's no deploying a database. The way that it works using the OCI approach is to deploy what we call an EBS asserter, which is a very lightweight component that essentially takes standards-based tokens from OCI and converts them into sessions within eBusiness Suite. 
If you optionally want to also manage users within eBusiness Suite, whether that's synchronizing them from eBusiness Suite into OCI, or the other way around, taking users from OCI and provisioning them into eBusiness Suite, then you can do that with the provisioning bridge. You don't have to use both components. These are independent components. I can use the asserter without the bridge. I can use the bridge without the asserter. But similarly, the bridge is a lightweight component. It doesn't have a big infrastructure to deploy. So by going with the approach of using OCI, you're massively simplifying the components that you're deploying and that integration um, complexity, if you like, that you would have if you were using Access Manager and a directory. So no, you don't need to deploy IAM Suite. And if you do have IAM Suite deployed, then you must um, remove that configuration in order to use EBS Asserter and the provisioning bridge. So that's question one. The second question I then get asked is, if I am deploying the Asserter and or the provisioning bridge, then can I put them directly on the EBS servers? Because I don't necessarily want to spin up additional infrastructure and additional service for this. And the answer to this is fairly straightforward. Technically, yes, you can. There's nothing to stop you installing additional components on your EBS servers. However, my recommendation would be not to do that. My recommendation would be to leave the EBS servers alone and deploy the asserter, and if you're using it, the provisioning bridge, onto separate servers. It means you're minimizing the dependencies between them. You're minimizing any conflict between them. They might be requiring different Java versions. So you don't really want to be managing different versions of Java on your EBS servers. So by putting them on different servers, it means you can scale them independently. It means you can manage them independently. And you're not relying on worrying about any potential dependencies or conflicts. So I would always suggest that you would put the asserter and the provisioning bridge on their own sets of servers um, and leave the EBS servers um, alone. Number three. So now we're thinking about deploying the asserter and we're thinking about deploying potentially the provisioning bridge. What do I need to think about in terms of non-functional requirements? How performant does it have to be? How resilient does it have to be? Now to look at this, we'll pick each of these topics in turn. Let's look at the resilience. Let's understand how the asserter works. So the way the asserter works is the user would try and access EBS. EBS, if they weren't already authenticated, would redirect them to the asserter. The asserter would redirect them to OCI IAM, which would authenticate the user by whatever mechanism it wants to. It would then send them back to the asserter. The asserter would create a session within EBS for that authenticated user. It would send the session token back to the user and it would redirect them back to EBS. And the user would then carry on their work. So in that flow, if the asserter was to go down, then your users would lose access to EBS because they have no way of authenticating. And let's assume at this point that the user no longer has a local password within EBS. So therefore, it's very important that the asserter has the same level of performance and resilience, sorry, not performance, it has the same level of resilience as EBS. So the SLA for it should be at least as good as EBS. You don't want your EBS server sat highly resilient across four nodes, and then the asserter sat on one small box in the corner. Because if that one small box in the corner goes down, you're going to lose access to EBS as end users. So it needs that same level, uh, level of resilience. If you've got EBS on a two node cluster, put your asserter on a two node cluster. You confront it with a load balancer. If you're running in OCI, you can lo use load balancer as a service. So that allows you to get that level of resilience that you need for the asserter. Now, the provisioning bridge is a little bit different. So like with most identity and access management, if your provisioning capability goes down, then we lose the ability to provision new users or synchronize users or change users' roles. But existing users aren't affected. Existing users can still log in. They can still access eBusiness Suite. So it's not typically seen as as critical a capability as the asserter. If it goes down for a couple of hours, it's not a crisis. It's not going to affect uh, the existing users of existing roles that people have. So typically the provisioning bridge is seen as a less mission critical component, doesn't quite need the same level of resilience as the asserter does. Now from a performance point of view, 
again, how performant does the asserter need to be? And if we go back to the flow that I explained, how the asserter actually works, it's only used during authentication. It's not a reverse proxy. It doesn't sit in front of EBS and all requests go through it. That's not how it works. It only works during authentication when the user gets redirected to authenticate to um, OCI IAM. So therefore, when you're thinking about performance, you need to scale the asserter to handle the number of concurrent authentications or the number of peak authentications that you're going to hit for your EBS service. So slightly different performance requirements to what EBS has, because we're not looking at concurrent sessions, we're looking at concurrent authentications. Question number four. I mentioned that when you deploy the asserter, it runs on WebLogic, so you need to use WebLogic. So I usually get asked the question, is the WebLogic license included with the asserter, or does a customer need to procure the WebLogic license separately? And this is documented. The short answer is yes, it is included. If you look at the documentation for OCI IAM, or in this case, it's a documentation for Identity Cloud Service, then you will see that for the asserter, you have a right to use WebLogic Server Enterprise Edition solely for running the asserter. So you can't deploy other applications on it under that license, but you can deploy and you can use um, the asserter using that WebLogic license. So the final question, I talked to customers who've got existing identity and access management capabilities. They might have a third party identity provider and they want to integrate that with EBS so that users are authenticating to EBS through that third party provider. And the question is, can I integrate my third party provider directly with EBS? Can I bypass OCI IAM? And can I go straight to eBusiness Suite? Now, if we go back to our original reference architecture that talked about Access Manager and talked about the directory services, then this is um, a diagram taken from that reference architecture that shows what the standard pattern of integration is. As you can see, there is no direct integration between eBusiness Suite and third-party single sign-on solutions. Why? Well, eBusiness Suite doesn't understand identity open standards. It doesn't understand SAML. It doesn't understand OpenID Connect or OAuth. So therefore, the, the standard approach is to use Access Manager in between, because Access Manager does understand SAML, for example. So what that means is you can have eBusiness Suite integrated with Access Manager, and then Access Manager is integrated with the third-party single sign-on solution. That is the documented, supported, and certified integration that we support within Oracle. And that's the traditional reference architecture. So what does that look like with OCI IAM? Well, it's exactly the same. We don't support direct integration from third-party identity providers, typically because eBusiness Suite doesn't support the standards. But the integration pattern is the same if you're using OCI IAM. You'd integrate eBusiness Suite through the asserter and all the provisioning bridge with OCI's Identity and Access Management, and you would then integrate OCI's IAM with your third-party provider and that will utilize open standards. So whether that's a SAML-based integration or whether that's an OpenID Connect-based integration, you can achieve that through that integration between OCI IAM. And because um, OCI's Identity Access Management also supports standards like SKIM, it means you can also automate user management from that third-party provider. So you're not separately managing users within OCI's IAM. You can do it via automation from your third-party provider. Now, I said there was five questions, um, but then I thought of a, an additional one. So I called it a bonus question. I like five. Five is a nice round number from a questions point of view, but I wanted to add another one in there. So a bonus question for you. Which EBS modules are supported by the asserter? Because this is quite often a question, again, that I get asked regularly. So I thought I'd document it here. So fundamentally, all the modules that use browser-based login are supported. That's fairly straightforward. Similarly, if you're using Web ADI and you're using the Excel based login, that is also supported. Finally, mobile apps like approvals and expenses are also supported for use through OCI IAM. Where the limitation is, is any of the modules that don't use the browser based login. So, for example, the mobile web apps or e signature, 
but neither of those use the browser-based login and therefore they don't work and they're not supported with OCI's IAM. So hopefully that helps explain that. That covers most of those use cases. That covers most modules that um, I certainly come across when I talk to customers. So fairly short video. I hope you find it useful. Um, I hope that answered some of the questions for you. Um, and I'd love to see you deploying eBusiness Suite single sign-on using OCI's IAM. Thank you for listening.